So I've been known to talk about the whole Xbox thing. Today, Xbox makes history because they are releasing their future of Xbox, which I think is going to be really, really exciting, and I will be having a follow-up video today. So two today, two for the price of one, which I already said I wasn't going to post on Thursday, but I'm doing it anyway. I have been messing around with a device, the Lenovo Legion Go. I originally thought I was going to return it, and it was all packaged and ready to go, and it was sitting there, and I'm like, I just want to know more about something like the Lenovo Legion Go. And so I did a couple things. I resubscribed. Well, it came with free month of Game Pass. So I have Game Pass and I've been downloading Game Pass games. I've been downloading Steam games. I've been doing a bunch of stuff because the question that I had was from a practical, practical, practical perspective, is it actually a viable solution? Oh, and by the way, if you want to get the play mug, you can see it. It's in the thing below. You know, you should see it. So yeah. I've been messing around with this guy, Lenovo Legion Go. It's a behemoth. It's cool. I mean, it has the whole like Joy-Con thing or whatever you want, like detachable, and this one's a mouse. It's cool. But the question was like, is this really worth it in comparison to something like an Xbox? Because you see, Steam, or the Steam Deck rather, can't do Xbox Game Pass as easily. Is it possible? Yes, to a certain extent. Can you technically boot into the Linux side and then install Windows and do, yeah. But it wasn't designed to be able to do that. And I know that the Allied is able to do things similarly, but again, I don't have the Ally here. It's just the Legion Go. And the reason why I went Legion Go over Ally is because I believe that the form factor of this thing is a little bit more um, in tune with what a future of gaming could look like, some sort of hybrid kind of thing. And yes, it's a computer as well, but for $800, $800, is it, is it the all-in-one package? Well, I'm not gonna be able to answer that exact question today. What I am gonna be able to answer is a side-by-side -side comparison between that and something a little bit more practical. I know it seems odd. A Series S with Upspec Gaming's X screen. This is not a sponsored video at all. This is actually their older version of their screen before they were approved by Xbox. They are now partnered with Xbox and this screen is designed specifically and a licensed Xbox product, which is kind of cool. This right here, I believe to be one of the best combos in the whole lineup, but it is just Xbox. And for those of you who are questioning whether or not Xbox is worth it here this year, I would say, well, there are a lot of things to balance. I'm, we have a lot of information that we're hoping to get today. This is just a practical perspective. I know that the difference between an Xbox Series S and the AMD X1 chip or whatever that chip is, the extreme chip, Z1, A1, who knows, dude. I'm not the tech specs guy, I'm the practical guy. How practical is this? And when I sit down to play a game like Halo Infinite on this, sure, I can play this in handheld mode, laying back, sitting on the couch, doing this thing, and that is a nice experience to a certain extent, but the amount of adjustments that needs to take place, and this is something that I was not expecting, but it's not at all surprising because I had this exact same experience when I was messing around with the Zephyrus G14, which was the, uh, the only gaming laptop that I tried. Because portability is so important for us dad gamers out there, dude. Like, I call it flexible location gaming FlexiLock. It, FlexiLock gaming is is so unbelievably important because of, you know, the door swings open and your kid's like, hey, I need this, I need that. I want to go play in the backyard with all the different backyard things. Can you come out there with me? And stuff like that, right? You don't want to just be locked to this where your you know, wife comes home and is like, hey, can you help me with this? And you go into the other room and then you come back and you want to be available, right? And so maybe being here or completely taking over the TV and playing, you know, whatever it may be is not the best option. So FlexiLock Gaming is becoming more and more of a thing. And so I was like, dude, I wanna see, like I wanna see is my Game Pass experience gonna be something that's well worth it. And to be honest, for $808, the $808, you get 
Game Pass, you get Epic Store, you get Steam, you get, you get the whole package, right? But, but, what if you already have an Xbox Series S? What if you already own that? Not this or this, but what if you owned a Series S, you know, you purchased it, whether it's, it's one terabyte or whatever it may be. Would the Legion Go be the best bet? Or would like a Steam Deck and this screen be the best bet? I don't know, like you're gonna have to answer that question for yourself because this is its own thing. But what I realized is I'm not gonna be able to play the games well without plugging in the very machine itself. And so I am someone who was like, one, two, three, so this is three. Three. Um, I was someone who was like, I am not getting the gaming performance that I'm looking for because there's not enough power being drawn to the machine. The fans themselves are kicking on, it's pretty loud, and so there, there's a little bit of a tension that gets drawn from that very, um, that very thing, right? Or am I, is it more practical, honestly, to get into my you know living room, grab a part of the coffee table, or even heck, put this on my lap, flip it open, and decide to play a game that way? That That's the back and forth. And so I tried it, right? I was like, okay, how practical is it? It's weird. It's no different than maybe a gaming laptop, but I would say that one of the biggest draws to the Legion Go in regards to specifically the Game Pass experience is the flexible nature of it. Oh, this cup's dirty. And so with the flexible nature of the Legion Go, I'm like, cool, this is awesome. I'm able to move around, do whatever I want, dock it if I would like to. But then there was that very, very experience I had, which was I'm trying to play games Last night, I tried for the life of me to dial in Resident Evil 4 on the Legion Go. And it just, holy smokes, it chugged. It literally chugged. Like, I went down to the lowest settings and I was having issues. I would go to zoom in to try to uh, punch in for a sniper shot. No, it lagged like crazy. Meanwhile, on, you know, PlayStation, you're having a better experience. And heck, even on something like... Is this crack? What's going on here? Why does this cup have a permanent mark underneath? Return it. No. Uh, even on something like the Steam Deck, it seems to run a little bit better. I'm curious if Windows is the problem um, with it. But anyway, I don't know all the technical specifications or the, the, the techie reasons why that's happening. All I know is for someone who has $800 that needs to be spent to use, to, to get into one of these, that's after tax, right? 250 for this screen and another five for the Steam Deck equates to 750 bucks, which allows you to have the Steam and Xbox Game Pass, right? Or Xbox is, yeah, Game Pass. And then you're like, well, what about Epic? Well, Epic, I don't know if you're playing games on Epic, but if you have an Xbox, then you have the ability to get more than just Game Pass games, right? And so, yes, this has a display that allows you to play up to 144 hertz. I'm not getting 144 hertz. And this is 60 and 1080. That is 800? No, 1600? But then you have to drop it to 800 in order to get better frame rates. Honestly, I think that this, when it ends up becoming better at doing what it's doing, will end up being the future. It's a little bit cumbersome right now um, and clunky and seems like it's in beta and th this will soon be gone but this package right here seems to be honestly just as portable as something like the legion go and very much so a better gaming experience in fact i went out i'm trying to look for the case that it comes with mm. it doesn't come with a case you have to buy a case extra but Ah, here we go. I, I've i added to the kit. So this is the kit, right? Everything goes in here. My Xbox isn't even plugged into the wall anymore. It, well, to my setup. It's, this is its permanent thing because of the um, limited amount of Xbox stuff I do. Come, the controller. I purchased a 12 foot cable. So I'm 
pretty set. In order for you to actually capital, not capitalize, fully utilize, it has a place for controller. So I have the controller right in here. And it's, you know, the, it has a little notch so that the, the um, bumpers and the triggers have a place to rise so they're not always being pushed. And, uh, you know, it's a it's beautiful little case. Again, I'm not sponsored by these guys. Not one bit. I'd love to be sponsored by them. Heck, I'd even do some gaming events where I'd have um, all of these out, 12 of them out, and we could play Halo. All sitting around having a great time. Wouldn't that be a, a joyous occasion? Um, especially because <laughs> Xbox is pretty much going all digital anyway, so what's the purpose of having a bigger console that you can play physical games, right? That's a prediction, that's not fact. But that little setup, that tight little setup is good enough for plug and play gaming. Because with the Legion Go, I'm not able to get an actual acceptable gaming experience unless this thing's plugged into power. And so why at that point would I wanna have a portable gaming device that touts its portable nature if power is required to actually get the gaming experience that you're looking for. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just seems, I don't know. It just doesn't seem, it seems like it's like portable gaming with an asterisk, right? Versus something like the Steam Deck, which you're good to go. Is it as powerful as the Legion Go? No. Is it more optimized to play Steam games? I believe it is. I believe it runs better. It certainly has a better UI, that's for sure. This is Windows. I mean, I can do everything I need to do on this. This is, for better or for worse, a PC, like a great, awesome, tightly designed PC. I had an idea to try to use this for like a month as just my PC. And I'm like, well, what's gonna happen? It's gonna be a week, but there's gonna be a lot more coverage of understanding this space because I honestly believe that this space is the future of what gaming has to offer. I mean, FlexiLock Gaming is like the thing for dads, right? We. Just being able to grab and go, we don't have that much time in our day. Sometimes the only time, sometimes the only time we have to ourselves is the lunch break or the few moments that we may have at the very end of our day, right? That's all we got. And the thought of, you know, setting something up and getting everything together and whatever it may be may not be the best. And so even something like that little setup isn't the best but when I was trying to do my gaming right that specifically game pass gaming on something like the Legion go I was running into the difficulties that I guess exist with PC gaming that still aren't hammered out yet that I don't have with something like the Steam Deck which is the idea of optimization heck I just wanted to play Ori will of the wisps at a solid frame rate and I was having trouble doing so now I think that there's a lot of adjustment that needs to take place in order to get stuff a little bit more dialed in. I can draw back the resolution. I can um, decrease the, cap the frames. Heck, I could get down to an 800p image on a display like that with, you know, 60 frames locked and try to dr drop it to that and probably get a relatively good experience. But at $750, $800, you start to ask the question, what is this thing really going to do as far as serve me as a gamer? And with something like an Xbox Series S with a portable display attached to it, you get a few things. You get Xbox UI, which is gonna be a little bit more tight. You're gonna get a console gaming experience, which is gonna be definitely more tailored to work rather than um, the PC gamer experience, which is tailored for flexibility because the game that gets released, Call of Duty or Fortnite or Resident Evil 4, whatever you're getting is made and released to play on something like the Legion Go or to play on something like a, I don't know, Dell laptop or a MSI laptop or even a Razer laptop. I'm using laptops. This, what is this, Geekom mini PC? Right there, it has to work. So there's there's a lot of dialing in. The settings I have on my mini PC aren't gonna be the same settings I have for my Legion Go. And they're certainly not gonna be the same settings that my buddy Chase has for his very, very capable gaming rig with a dedicated graphics card, right? And so, that's where we run into the optimization conversation 
that you just don't have to deal with with something like an Xbox, the PlayStation, and that's pretty much it, because Nintendo, they play by their own rules. Yeah, they're gonna be getting Call of Duty, so this says, but come on. If you're gonna be sit down and play freaking Call of Duty, are you gonna grab your Switch, or are you gonna grab an Xbox controller or a PlayStation controller, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not sitting down and being like, oh, I can't wait to play Call of Duty on my Switch. That's crazy, dude. I know that there's guys that do Call of Duty with the Joy-Cons and they freaking crush, but still, the flexibility that exists with a portable gaming PC is phenomenal. And the very reason why this channel exists is because of Xbox. I think the natural progression is Xbox, PC gaming, gaming PCs, and portable flexi, flexi lock gaming, right? That's really kind of the way that I look at it. Xbox to PC is the same thing, and flexi lock gaming through portable PCs is my interest. Really, it just comes down to technology, and that's where we get a lot of conversations here. Um, PlayStation as a whole, you know, I've talked about a great deal. PlayStation just offers me access to games that are exclusive to PlayStation. Well, what are you going to talk about PlayStation about? Hey, they have the best exclusives in the game? Yeah, sure. Are they coming to PC? Yeah, eventually. They have better hardware than Xbox? I think so, personally. I certainly do. And people get pissed in the comments. Just be pissed, dude. Comment away. I get engagement either way, right? I think that PlayStation hardware is better than Xbox hardware. Absolutely. Their controllers are better. They're more comfortable in my opinion. I do prefer symmetrical to asymmetrical thumbsticks, but whatever. That's just preference. I like the button layout of triangle square zero and X. That's me or circle X. That is certainly my go-to, but that's something I grew up with. And so, I think that the DualSense controller is incredible. That's my access to games is to do that. I'm used to it, right? But gaming is gaming is game. It doesn't matter where you play in the games. So I can play Final Fantasy VII. I always say reunion, but I mean rebirth. I'm gonna be able to play it on my PlayStation. Can I play it on Xbox? No. If it was available on Xbox, would I play it on Xbox? No, because I want to have the physical version of the game, right? I don't have a physical uh, thing for, play, for Xbox, right? Nintendo's Nintendo, but Here's the deal. There's not much to say about PlayStation, except they have the best exclusives, and their hardware seems to be better than Xbox hardware. Simple as that. I'm not gonna sit here and try to convince you otherwise. If you don't like PlayStation, you don't like PlayStation. Someone's like, dude, PlayStation's a waste of money. I don't like any of the games that are available on it. Pfft. It is a waste of money. Don't get it. It's not worth it, dude. It's not worth it one bit. 500 bucks for that thing? No way, dude. Not worth it. Nintendo, everyone should have a Nintendo device because they're a lot of fun. You can play games with kids and just you have a good time right you got kids it's an incredible device but it's its own thing plenty of people want about nintendo i don't have top tens for you because i play games i want to play i don't want to suggest games for you to play i'm more interested in the technology behind it all right and so what i see as far as the future of gaming is this you know flexi lock stock gaming i honestly do and i want to look for the gaming experience that's going to be the most immersive but also the least restrictive, right? If we're talking the most immersive experience out there, excluding VR, because VR by definition is gonna be more immersive, because you're literally in the game. But if we're talking about most immersive type of gaming experience out there, it's gonna be the one where the game feels like there's no barriers between you and that experience. I personally believe that PlayStation delivers that for me because, UI aside, because, the DualSense controller has that immersion aspect to it, and then the game itself runs really well. Simple as that. But for other people, it may be a different device, right? Maybe Xbox, maybe PC. But as we get into this flexi lock style gaming, I think that portable PCs and handheld gaming PCs, more, uh, much, much more defined, is, as it gets better, is going to be that style of gaming, where you pick up a device, you push it on, you're good to go. The Steam Deck OLED, this version is the absolute best version of that experience to date. The ROG Ally seems to be second best because it does that really well. The hardware is solid. You're gonna be set as far as the physical nature of it. This right here adds an element of um, innovation that I think is exciting, but also a very, very huge thing for us parents is this looks like it'll break easy. And I didn't see a posting for us to just buy new handles, whatever they're gonna call it, because they can't use the word Joy-Con. I, I really like the idea that the Legion Go has. I think it's 
got a lot going for it. And it's a very viable option for some people. And as I said, when it comes to these devices like the Ally, the Steam Deck, the Legion, go, the Steam Deck just crushes it because of its simplicity in nature. It has its OS on there. That OS is good enough. It gets plenty of support. You can throw that OS onto the Legion Go as well and use Steam OS there. But the Steam Deck just needs to do one job. It needs to run its launcher and the games run within that. And that's pretty much it. You do have to do some customization with certain things, but it's not having to also run a full Windows 11 OS that's extremely clunky and in some ways bloated in the background. And I feel like that is the shining star when it comes to the Steam Deck. And so where Legion Go starts to introduce some of these additional access points to different games, my question therein lies is, is a Legion Go, the unity of that whole experience in one device, the play, or are we still in a position where we need multiple devices that do the jobs exceptionally well? A Steam Deck to do Steam games exceptionally well in a portable form factor and a Xbox Series S. Because obviously, if you're looking to play Xbox PC Game Pass games, or not Xbox PC, but PC Game Pass games on a Legion Go, you certainly don't mind if the game is downscaled to a lower resolution, has lower textures, because you're gonna need to do that anyway. So the, the equal counterpart to a Legion Go, as far as Xbox games are concerned, is a Series S. So would a second-hand Series S with one of these gaming display things, whatever you want to call them, from either AppSpec or G-Store, whatever it may be, is that a better solution? I think as far as the simplicity of the gaming experience, certainly. Plug and play is something that is very important to me. FlexiLock is still on, um, it's still second, right? I think that I being able to turn on something and go is very important. Am I saying, oh, the Xbox is the best, forget this, I'm switching? No, I'm simply just comparing the two experiences and seeing that all those games are accessible there because they're not accessible. And by there, I mean the Legion Go and they're not accessible on my Steam Deck, which is sitting on my desk. But am I wanting to play the games in this form factor on this, the way that they run, or would I rather set time aside to play it on an Xbox, or better yet, have the portable system set up somewhere, like in my backyard with me, in the living room, with some headphones, whatever it may be. Because that experience is gonna be more solid. It's an interesting question, right? I think so. I think that Xbox has introduced something to us that we might have to consider. Nintendo introduced the idea of hybrid gaming. They kind of paved the way. And then from hybrid gaming, we got dedicated handhelds, right? They already existed. I've just been told in the comments. People naming off odd, crazy named ones. They're like, oh yeah, see, this one's been around since before the Nintendo Switch. Sure, whatever. I'm talking name brand, boys and girls. And the reason why I'm talking name, name brand is because I want things that work and that are, are really, really have a lot of money behind them. Because if there's a lot of R&D, and if there's a finance department behind it that's strong, there's going to be second, third, fourth gens that aren't reliant on the purchasing of that device as much as making sure that device is out there and that people know, right? Something like the Aya Neo. The Aya Neo needs to be purchased in order for it to continue to on. The Steam Deck needs to at least have proof of concept, but Steam Deck has Steam behind it. So also because of that, they can drop the price because they can lose money on hardware and gain money in software, right? Legion Go. Legion has plenty. Lenovo's, Lenovo, not Legion. Lenovo has plenty of devices that are going to make the money that the Legion Go doesn't need to. Legion Go can just come to market and they can get market data. They can be like, okay, this is kind of cool, right? So I'm going with big brands because this is not the last Legion Go. That's not the last ROG ally right? We don't know if it's the last Aya Neo. We don't know if it's the last one of these, all these one-off ones. We don't know because that company, that's what they do, right? And so I stick with the big boys because I know that they're going to keep getting more and they have far better budgets for it. But Nintendo Switch paved the way when it comes to hybrid gaming. People wanted hybrid gaming. 
And then we realized that in that hybrid gaming situation, people realized where their preference was. The 50-50 hybrid gamer isn't as common as they were before, right? It was a novelty that existed, but seven years in, we have people saying like, I never take my Switch out of the dock or I never dock my Switch. It's rarely that, I'm, that people are like, yeah, I'm about 50-50, right? I charge my Switch on my dock, but it primarily is a handheld gaming device with the exception of a couple games that I want to play. But even then, I'm not doing that as much. And so we start to see the portable PC market. Steam Deck, proof of concept, right? What if portable PCs existed? And then now I have friends who are like, I got a Steam Deck, I'm never gonna dock it. I don't really care to. Um, I just wanna play whatever on portable mode. It's great. It's great. So there are a lot of things to consider. And I just thought this was an interesting comparison that I did myself. And I'm like, huh, I'm more inclined to boot up this, the Series S and play games that way than I would be inclined to try to figure out how to get the Legion Go to do it. Because the Steam Deck experience is so good. It's so good. All right, guys, I'm not really going to finish this because I'm going to make another cup later to talk about the future of Xbox, and I'll release that later this afternoon. You'll have to forgive me on the timing because my kids are going to be the ones uh, dictating how that goes. So that's all for me today. I'll talk to you guys when I talk to you, okay? All right. Happy gaming.